Hey everyone, we are back again with another MCU movie. And for today's one, we're looking at an alright one, I guess. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk, which came out in 2008. And it is not the first MCU movie that came out, Malika. It's actually the second one. <laughs> hey, a Wikipedia fan. <laughs> okay, so when you guys first watched it, what did you guys think of this one? It changed my life. <laughs> um, I saw this later, so I didn't end up seeing this film in the movies. I saw this at a later stage. And it's weird for me because it was one of those films at the time where I really liked the Hulk and I liked some of the aspects they explored in the film, but I wasn't 100% with the film. But as time has gone on, I've learned to enjoy the film a lot more, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't see it I, in the movies either. Yeah, neither. And I think I watched it like when it came out on DVD and I haven't watched it since. <laughs> yeah, I saw it with some family friends because they just had it on, on DVD as well. And uh, I thought it, I literally thought it was just a sequel to um, Eric Banner's Hulk. <laughs> in saying that though, I was in year eight, so I was pretty excited for all the fight scenes and all the actions and stuff. I think also... Because I just actually looked up, um, in 2008, um, Punisher Warzone came out as well. Oh, really? So it was like just the year of just where all these different Marvel films were coming out. And because we didn't have the whole MCU, oh, this is the next MCU film. It was just like, all right, yeah, you can go and see Iron Man, you can go and see Hulk, yeah. just pick whatever. You know, it wasn't like we all need, like, it wasn't like, all right, boys, let's go and watch this movie and sit down. You know, it was like, <laughs> whatever. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it made it heaps confusing because then, well, we weren't even aware of an Infinity or an Avengers saga. So yeah, we were just no. like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> and then yeah. they just like had all the st all their standalones, like the Punisher ones and the Blades and all of them. And then no one knew if anything was connected or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember because I used to read the JB Hi-Fi stack magazines. Oh, you yeah. remember those? I oh, know, they're <laughs> probably still around. <laughs> And I remember reading about this and that, and they're like, oh, there's a great um, scene where Iron Man pops up. And like, because I told you guys in the Iron Man one, I hadn't seen the Nick Fury post credit scene until years after I saw Iron Man. I was like, whoa, okay, this must be the first interconnection. But even then, my mind was it was going to be a Hulk versus Iron Man movie. Like, I didn't, my mind didn't go to, oh, yeah, they're going to make, you know, Captain America. And like, you know, it was just... It's like, okay, they're going to have a movie with both Hulk and Iron Man, okay. That's a pretty short fight, though, Vince. It'll be a short, it'll be a short film. <laughs> 30 minutes, Hulk's one. There you go. Everyone's finished. <laughs> well, we did see the fight in Age of Ultron. Uh, well, yeah. But Banner literally worked with him to develop a suit that could help take him down. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, I think I still can't Stark, take lost, him down. <laughs> Stark lost in that, didn't he? Did he? Uh, yeah, of course he did. Not really. I mean, I They're mean, both lost. He he was just trying to get Hulk back to the riot, like out of uh, Scarlet Witch's control. So yeah, but he succeeded in that sense. Yeah, yeah, and then Hulk punched him, I think, and then no, actually, went black. at the end, Iron Man punches him after he like smashes him through the through the, oh, okay. <laughs> through yeah. the construction site. Oh, I like yeah. it when he grabs the fist and just sits there punching him in the face heaps. <laughs> go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> well, if anything, with this movie, usually when I, when I used to rewatch it, just because I was, it was very under the radar for me and I always put it off to the side because, I don't know, there's nothing very, well, I initially thought there wasn't much MCU value, you could say. And I thought Abomination, of, before, before it became Abomination, I thought, Blonsky was a pretty cool mind you I was in year eight so there wasn't much that impressed me especially when it came to no, but movies. I do agree with that because like I think I think it sounds weird but it, this comes off from the born identity type vibe which was very big at the around that yeah. time I think I don't know if Ultimate came out I don't know how many years before yeah. this came out but like the whole idea of Banner on the run and he got this super soldier that's going after him mm. played by a guy that's famous in the Tarantino movies. It's yes. Not yeah. Bad. yeah. Yeah, Blonsky was done well. Yeah. It, the abomination part, not so well. That could be done a lot better. But 
as thought, Blonsky was pretty good. Yeah, the the way he looked, like the design of the Abomination character was way off. It was something yeah. else. It was like something out of a, I don't know, a Ninja Turtles villain or some crap. Yeah, it was so, like a mutation more than an Abomination. Yeah. So, Mark, do you know the Abomination more from the comics? Or... Um, he hasn't, in the comics I've read recently, he hasn't popped up a huge amount. Okay. So, as Abomination as a character, I don't know a huge amount about him. Robin, have you, do you know him from the cartoons? or? Well, actually, I was going to ask what Blonsky was like. I know what Abomination's like. He's just, like, as Abomination, I mean, like, he, all he wants is to be better than the Hulk. That's his yeah, he's amphibious. Hulk. He's like an he's... anti-Hulk. Like, yeah. he's just a... Uh, yeah, he has this, like... Hulk. Yeah, and he has that amphibious green kind of... Yeah, like a fish type look. Off green sort look, of. yeah. I but know, as for um, Blonsky, I, yeah. I was going to ask, like, what does he look like in the comics? Because I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I know he's a Russian sure agent. Yeah. Yeah. Because he represented the whole, you know, the fear of communism at the time and whatever. But, like, in a way, like, there still is those political tensions around today in different forms with, like, you know, with Russia and America and so on. So I don't understand why they didn't go down the route of him being a Russian. Like, why they were like, nah, well, he was raised in Russia, but he's a Marine. He's an He's English, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. Maybe it was just context of the time of what worked. I don't know. Mm. Oh, I can't really think of what <laughs> what the military, yeah, what they possibly, portrayed yeah. as the the bad guys then. But he just seemed like a, a, mer- a mercenary that just was in it for the fight. Obviously, there's Ross and then there's Bonsky. May, do you feel maybe having those two villains kind of took away from both in a way? Because, like, in a way, Blonsky is really Ross's puppet in it all. And it kind of, you can't really just sit with one villain, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah well, Ross himself has been underexplored. Yeah. yeah. Since, he is, since he becomes Red Hulk in yeah. the comics. So yeah, they haven't really done a huge amount with Ross. Yet I think they will, just because he's he's still in the MCU. They've used him in like so many yeah. movies going onwards. But yeah, I get what you're saying, Fitz. Like, who's who's the who's the villain, <laughs> essentially, yeah. in the movie? Because yeah, it's like I think that was one of the things they were struggling with establishing a bad guy, like a proper bad guy. Because yeah. yeah, like you said, they took away from each other's roles yeah because it's like you kind of get the sense blonsky's like i've seen a guy who is better than me and has taken out my whole squad and is capable of doing much more than that i want to be better than him similar to what you say he's like in the comics but then at the same time it's like he's just doing what ross wants him so it's just this constant conflict between him being what you know just following orders by ross and then yeah. him every now and then stepping out and being like, no, I want to be better. Mm. But he never, it's just, there's that bit of that imbalance where he's not really going down either path. Yeah. I think if anything, what they did um, explore well and common between them was that the Hulk or whatever, this experiment of weaponizing the Hulk, it's a, it's a, it's power that they both wanted to have. But for yeah. Blonsky, he just, he just likes a challenge. He just likes a fight. So he, he, he'll he give into whatever Ross says regardless, just as long as he can either fight the Hulk, take on the Hulk, or eventually become something Hulk-like. Yeah. Whereas he Ross, was just tagging along for the ride. Yeah. And Ross, obviously, he'll... His view of, like... He's a patriot, but his view is twisted. Like, it's all it's all or nothing, like, whatever the cost. And, um, yeah, his goal throughout the movie is just to capture the Hulk and like use use banner for whatever experiments he had planned. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to use the strength for the military. Trying so to extract on, the yeah. Hulk serum. So on a surface level or that level of uh what they were trying to establish there, it did that was clear, but I do agree at the same time that they kind of took away from one another's like strength in being a villain's role. Because abomination at the end was kind of just like, yeah, let's let's throw it in there. Yeah, yeah, because like there's no, like there's really no much, not much logic behind that scene of him just going, 
like, fair enough, he wants more power. But then, yeah, he runs around Harlan. They have the big fight scene, which is yeah. cool, but it's a bit similar to the, even though Iron Man's a great film, the ending of Iron Man 1, where by the end, there's really not much logic between, like, yes, we get a fight scene, that's great. But mm. there's no logic between why it's happening. It's just like, this fight scene's got to happen. Yeah, and it's and, pretty much two immortals trying yeah, to yeah. just hitting each other and there will be no winner ever. <laughs> yeah. Which, I thought it was exciting. It was an exciting fight. But, um, yeah, it was. It was just, what, it lacked like any real meaning. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could because that's the thing. There's constant talk that Blonsky's now in some shield hangar somewhere. And yeah. that's interesting to me. It's like, where's Blonsky now? And, yeah. and that's what we'll go into later. But it's yeah. like, they say, say the the same repercussions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they say the same thing about um, Stern's character being the leader. Like they're both together somewhere, but that's just rumors. Like I don't know if they're. <laughs> yeah, isn't isn't that the scientist says head got bigger? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was I was actually just thinking. I was like, they brought in a third villain, and they, again, they've done nothing with that villain. As yeah. Yet. And then yeah, they brought him in, so you got to focus on him. Then you got to go back to Blonsky. Like <laughs> in some ways, it's the Spider Man. It's not entirely the same, but it's a bit similar to the Spider Man Three issue where there's not one set villain and i don't know i feel like even in previous films well like in the hulk 2003 it was a similar thing where hulk does not really have a proper adversary and like mark from your knowledge of the comics like you've read planet Mm. hulk world war hulk like from from watching the animated planet hulk there was more of an idea of hulk had a had a bad guy was going up against a guy that he needed to take on what's your knowledge of that in the comics for World War Hulk or just, just Hulk in like, general? Just Hulk in general, like in regards to worthy adversaries to Hulk. Yeah. Uh, he will usually go, like he goes up against the bad guy, like in the movie, he goes up against the Red King um, or he'll go up. So there's a Hulk versus Thanos little mini series or he joins in to the wars that are happening. Yeah. But then in recent ones, he sort of, he stay. He lays low because he actually dies and comes back. The Hulk. Yeah. Okay. Hawkeye kills him. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a. It was a. Um, Banner tells Hawkeye to kill him if he thinks he, if he sees he's going to lose control, yeah. and he gives him like a special arrow that will yeah. do it. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, um, but then he comes back because there was War of the Worlds and cosmic energy went flying everywhere, etc. Um. But it's the it's the good guy in Hulk that comes out, and that's why he he wants to fight yeah. the big guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, in this one, he was just he was just on the run. <laughs> so it's yeah, just, and he was, he was just protecting to, himself. And he spent the whole movie just trying to suppress the Hulk, which I mean, yeah. See, and this yeah, is some why... comics have that, some don't. <laughs> it depends. Like when he's trying to control the Hulk because it's taken over. When he finally just accepts the Hulk and they work together. Okay, but Mark, this is where I reckon I can bring it in, where we can have this chat, because for me, for me, what attracts me to the Hulk is this idea, I, I like that old fugitive aspect to him, this idea of he's struggling with this disease and he's trying to find a way to cure it, and he's struggling with the fact that this thing is a part of him, it represents a certain aspect mm-hmm. of him, but at the same time, it's taking away from a life he really wants. It's just the whole inner conflict, like the, the monster movie scenario, you know, the Wolfman, the Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, from talking in the past, I, I can tell you're more into this. I could be wrong, but you're more into the sensationalist Hulk, which is Hulk goes to other planets. Hulk, he can t- he's his own person. He can speak. He's got his own knowledge. Him and Banner are just pretty much two separate entities. And Hulk's got, like, you know, he's got a wife in Planet Hulk. He's... He's pretty much Russell Crowe on a mm. on a different planet. Like, <laughs> so just Hulk going into that, am up. I right in saying that, or like? <laughs> I don't. I don't mind both Hulks. I okay. like. I like the one where it's the conflict, but then I don't like when the conflict is done too much. Yeah. It's like that sort of gets boring. It's like how long is the guy just gonna? It's the same. <clears throat> it's the same issues. Like, it's, yeah, true. Yeah, you should be like, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, you've tried everything to get rid of the Hulk. Nothing's working. So just accept it. Move on. Um, And that's what they've done with the newer comics where he has moved on. 
and mm. it's only when it goes to um, Cho. So after Hulk dies, Hulk goes to the new Hulk, Cho, and then his way of getting rid of the Hulk is in his mind. He locks him in the trunk of a car. Oh, so there's still that conflict going on in the... Yeah, so he thinks he's got it under control. Yeah. Yeah. And But then it turns out he's just had him locked in the trunk of a car. And then that trunk pops open, this Hulk comes out, and then he just goes berserk. Yeah, okay. Um, but Banner has it, like, fully under control. Yeah. Which is what I like. That's the Hulk I like to see. <laughs> yeah, more okay. More than the conflict Hulk. Yeah. Because, like, one the big part of... I think I'm really on board with this film when he's in South America. Because, to me, you, you get to see Bruce Banner stripped down away from society and him just trying to figure it out and like you know trying to work through the anger trying to find different things you know having to work in a in you know a place that makes i don't know what is it yeah manager or something (laughs) and he's helping the guy you know fix things the guy's like i want to put you on the payroll i "I can't do that i like all that about it because it's the same thing with the old 1970s louis 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 frigno same deal of like He's trying to cure himself, but on the way, he's, try- he's using his abilities to help people and lay low and go under different identities. But I start to lose it more when, like I said, like even... I that's, like, the- that's, a, that's like a pre-Avengers Hulk, though. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. But I will admit, but and this what we'll, we'll talk about with Mark Ruffalo and so on, this Hulk wouldn't have worked in the Avengers. No, no obviously not. Even watching the Avengers, and I left the Avengers, the highlight for me in that film was the Hulk because it was just Hulk smash, Hulk right out of the comic books. Mm-hmm. But if it was this Hulk, I reckon I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much, which is that conflict there for me, which is interesting. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think they did. I, I like the way they did the Hulk in the Avengers, and that's mm-hmm. probably the transition. And you see it in the comics as well, pre-Avengers Hulk and post-Avengers Hulk. And it's only when they bring in the other versions. So you see Mr. Fix-It, and then you see Hulk from Future Imperfect. And that okay. guy is just, he's a ruthless Hulk. Yeah. Like he's just complete villain Hulk, and it's awesome. <laughs> on, a, on a segue, Maestro, what did you think of... that's his name. Oh, yeah. What did you think of um, Smart Hulk? Because I, I know people that weren't a fan of it. Well, I enjoyed it, but... I, I th- I like it, but I think where I agree with a lot of the fans is that there wasn't enough Hulk action. I think yeah, it wor- that's true. I think it and, worked enough for Endgame. But, yeah, um, but even then, like you, because of the relationship that he has with Black Widow, you think that when he finds out she's dead, that he will just absolutely rage on Thanos' army. But yeah. Then it's just like sort of... Yeah, I was going to say, it's still lacking in yeah. more Hulk. Then Banner. Yeah. And like when he when they go back in time and he has to he hits the car and he's like, Oh, Hulk smash. <laughs> yeah. Like he's not really into the smashing anymore. Well, like even though he said, Oh, I combined the two, it really comes off it's like he just took Hulk's greenness and muscles. Body. Like yeah. yeah, and just it was still Bruce Banner. Yeah. He, he, yeah. You know it was weird, he was wearing gla- was he wearing glasses? Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing <laughs> shirts so. now. It's, <laughs> so it seems like he's still that level of Hulk isn't as because his his eyesight's deteriorating. I didn't think I didn't think that was po- possible with the Hulk. Like, why is he wearing it's glasses? Not. It's they're, Banner. They're, Banner wears glasses. I know, probably, but they they probably don't have lenses in them. They're just they're, like the hipster glasses. That just shows to me he hasn't reached the full potential of this Hulk. He's got the form, obviously, mm-hmm. but I don't know there's something about it that's still lacking. But, but wouldn't you do the same? If you had the option to have Hulk's body and keep all your smarts in your mind, I'd do the same. Yeah, yeah. But, like, <laughs> wear glasses? Like, come on. I wouldn't wear glasses. But. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it because it was something different because I yeah. always like when they take risks. But well, like it we- wasn't what I was expecting when coming off Infinity War. It's like, look, we got to figure out, you know, Hulk doesn't want to come out because he's been defeated. Banner's been defeated. How are we going to solve this issue? Yeah, I was. I wasn't expecting them to be like, "Oh well, I'll just take what I need from you, and you can just go away now." Like, <laughs> it's got to be a gamble. And like on top of that, in the movie, you had Fat Thor, which was also another like yeah. Uh, yeah. strange. 
what mm. <laughs> what are they doing yeah then he just becomes beast at the end anyway yeah 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 like so he has his redeeming moment full of, uh, doesn't really have a redeeming moment full of cheeto energy <laughs> <laughs> and alcohol and vv <laughs> but look uh just back on incredible hulk <laughs> i think so incredible. i think um out of this movie i think i got everything you'd expect from an early days hulk movie yeah. um it was good like you said david that fugitive hulk like i thought it fit perfectly like the whole the the tone the whole time was one of like intense tensity yeah yeah intensity intensity yeah <laughs> it was like it was like that the whole time and yeah you had banner on the run and that suited norton pretty well and you know you had the good bits uh especially at the like in regards to conflict as to what hulk really is i think the movie did well in identifying trying to identify like what it means to be the hulk like whether he's a monster whether he's a weapon whether whether he can be used for good i thought that was good but i think one of its um where it was like struggling was i don't know i got like real tv show vibes from it like <laughs> uh for example like the at the beginning where they recap what what happens like all the events leading up to hulk because it's obviously a reboot so they don't have to go through the origin again it just it was very cheesy and it just seemed uh like a tv show vibe really because i actually liked that opening i, really? know it sounds, I, I enjoyed it, was, it like i thought it was openings. so cheesy oh I, I got on board with it yeah like if anything i think what marvel movies are good at like for example, Grant said he hadn't watched any movie. Uh, like, he hadn't watched Thor or Cap before The Avengers, or even Hulk, maybe. Yeah. And um, what they're good at is, like, uh, having a movie where you don't really need to have watched any of the mm -hmm. other ones, and you can just go on with that movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They, they give you the information that you need. So what when you say about this one is, I like, thought you, you didn't need that beginning thing? Or... <laughs> Uh, well, it, it just, that's what one of the things where it just takes away from its place from the MCU. Yeah. Like there's something about it, it, the, the, the beginning and the last fight scene with abomination made it all just seem like a TV show kind of feel rather than, yeah, I, I can see that, movie, you know? Yeah, I can see that. I get those vibes more from Thor, the dark world, yeah, but yeah. I think because I see more consequence in this one, like. Mm. funnily enough this does actually lead really well into the avengers because like i said we see in avengers he says you know i'm always angry and it's we've realized by that point he's figured out how to make peace with the hulk and we see at the end of this film you know he's, si he's sitting there and he's meditating and you know the days are going down to zero and you know what's about to happen and from memory i'm, I'm pretty sure he smiles just before he turns into the hulk yeah, it's like, this, mm. it's like I've accepted what, what's about to happen. So it was a good lead into that. Um, so I guess I don't know. I find it hard to see it as a tele, like as a feeling of a television show, based on I still felt feel it has consequence to the MCU in a way. Yeah, what, I yeah. think. Well, yeah, little well, callbacks and the few little Easter eggs that no one really picked up at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. certain other MCU films, like I said before, The Dark World for me, just felt like some side quests on the side. Like, this is just what happened <laughs> on the side. Well, they were yeah. filling up time with Dark World. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, you can say the same about Iron Man 2. But, um... And yeah. Three. <laughs> three? Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I like three. More than two, actually. But, well, it's um, not about like it, just about how those films feel. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's fair to say. And yeah, I do think actually they did well, like the character development of both Hulk and Banner. Um, with Hulk, yeah, like I said, Hulk, you had the themes of whether or not he's a hero or just a weapon or a monster. Like the beginning, when his first transformation, for some reason they had it like subtle, like you didn't fully see the Hulk, he was just in the darkness or like bits of his body you'd see. And like, I think they were just yeah. trying to allude to like, he's a monster. And then yeah. to Ross and every, uh, and that he was just he was a weapon, or something they could use or misuse. And then to Banner, he was like he was just trying to he just didn't want it in his life at all. And yeah. 
we can talk about Norton and I think what even though I you guys probably feel the same that we agree that Ruffalo suits more the future Avengers. But Norton fits that fugitive fugitive Bruce Banner yeah. where was, he's trying to figure yeah. out the conflict within or struggling with that. Yeah. I'll say something controversial. I'll <laughs> Okay, I think Christian Bale's Batman is a great Batman. It's a fantastic performance and it's a great Batman. But for me, it's not a comic book accurate Batman. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, for, looks, I, yeah, I and it's the that. same way. Yeah, it's the same way. I think I'll compare with Edward Norton. It's a great Bruce Banner, but to me, it's not a comic book accurate Banner. While to me, Rock, Mark Ruffalo's Banner just comes right off the pages. Yeah, but yeah, He's better at that humble nerd uh, banner that you'd expect. Yeah. Whereas Norton, as we were kind of saying uh, before this recording, he just seems a bit too. He's got too much charisma to be a banner for for yeah. <laughs> for the MCU. Well, imagine that scene in India with Black Widow with Edward Norton. It wouldn't yeah. have worked because that whole scene's built on this very quiet sort of a dude. And then he just bangs. He goes, why are you lying to me? Like, yeah, you yeah. just don't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That was really good. Uh, I, I feel like people slack on this movie because it lacks any, any kind of value in adding towards the infinity saga. But I, I was trying to look past that and think at the time, all they were setting up for was the first Avengers. So the big things then were obviously the Avengers and references to S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. And in this movie, there was like quite a few references to S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, especially in regards to what Ross uh, was, like all the things he was utilizing, all the resources. Yeah. And then the other big thing, of course, is the Hulk, who was a major role in the Avengers movie. Mm. Yeah. It's... It's difficult, but because it's like, and I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with Jared Leto's Morbius with the whole, the vulture in the trailer and all that. It's that similar thing of, can we, you know, borrow these elements to put in our film to set things up? Well, that's the vibe it comes off to me as. Because yeah, sure, like Ross uses Stark equipment. You know, this, there's a scene from, I, from this in Iron Man 2. But let's be, I think if you, if, if this film was made today and Feige was behind it, it would be, and it's hard to compare, but it would be a lot more MCU driven. Yeah, it would be very different. So yeah. the same way Ross is borrowing Stark equipment is the yeah. same way this film is borrowing MCU, um, what, what would you call it, reputation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wasn't, but wasn't the Stark, wasn't Stark company still real heavy with the military at that point? Yeah, well, he, it seemed like it was providing he either provided them the weapons in the past or he was still providing them just to help with mm. getting the Hulk. But then and he, even S.H.I.E.L.D., they still would have been real he heavily in with the military, I think, at that point. It was well, only yeah. after that Shield, they started pulling away. In the movie, S.H.I.E.L.D. was working with Ross to track down Banner. Like there's a scene mm. where he sends out an email or something and then Shield, through a S.H.I.E.L.D. system, they track down the email and find Banner. Well, I'm pretty sure even though this movie came out before Iron Man 2, it's supposed to be because like this, that scene I mentioned where in the background when Nick Fury's interviewing Tony Stark and you got the Hulk in the background, that's halfway through this movie. So we have to assume that the ending, the ending of um, Hulk is like a, a couple oh, of weeks man. after Iron Man 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was weird though in that movie because it seemed like they turned down Iron Man. They said he was narcissistic. Have you, have you seen the consultant? The consultant, which one's the that? Marvel one shot? Oh no, uh, no. So the way they explain it is, um, Ross wanted Blonsky, so he wanted to recruit Blonsky or something. Yeah, and they're like, no, we don't want him to do that. We want him to get Banner. So how do we convince him to do that? They're like, all right, well, what we'll do is we'll get the most narcissistic person to go and talk to Ross and get him to annoy him so much that Ross chooses not to let Blonsky out. 
then we can get better. So that's why they send Tony Stark to talk to Ross. Ah, uh, okay. So cool. uh -huh. it's a bit of a retcon, but you got to make yeah. it work. Yeah. You see, just little, because um, I'm just on Wikipedia at the same time. You see photos of Blonsky in Daredevil TV show. Oh, really? Really? There's, there's newspaper photos, apparently. <laughs> well, in four wow. episodes. That's interesting. Well, it just goes to show that there's so many characters in this Hulk movie that are still, like, relevant for the MCU and still usable. It's just up to them mm. how they're going to eventually use it. Yeah, well, they've got Ross, Red Hulk, they've got Abomination if they decide to reboot, and they've got the leader. And the leader's got huge storylines on his own. Yeah. Like, it's, that's three unexplored. Like, you could, you could probably make, like, two, three movies just to help keep going, like, if not more. But I think, I think David's got something to say. <laughs> yeah, but then that will go into the whole sensationalist aspect of it, and I don't know how I feel about that. I think... Well, they finished, they finished the Hulk conflict, internal Hulk conflict. That's done. But I don't think they'll ever go back to it. But what can... Because they've done Planet Hulk. Like, I like how they did Planet Hulk in Thor Ragnarok. I think that worked for the film. But where could they go? Like, I think... This is just me. There's a lot of in-between they could do, because... Throughout, up until Endgame, there's still Hulk conflict. But yeah, <laughs> like, I think they could pull something off with, if they did a Hulk solo movie, like, because he's only been featured as a side, oh, like, as a sidekick, or oh, not a sidekick, yeah. but like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Supporting character, yeah. Yeah, and if anything, so, I reckon something with Ross or Abomination or Leader, like, there's potential there for, kind of like what they did with Black Widow, where it's set pre end game and, and yeah more. what also depends what they do because from the trailers ross um shows is shown in the trailers in black widow so, yeah so it, it even depends what they do with him and that so yeah and appa apparently he looks like heaps younger than he did in incredible hulk <laughs> which is a bit weird but um like unless a, unless it's like an allusion to he's doing like bio enhancements or something yeah. Sorry, boys, what was that? I just missed that last video. Were you talking about uh, or something? Oh, I was just going to pitch something to you. This was an yeah. idea of mine. Um, Hulk sequel. I think because the Hulk's a scientist mm -hmm. and he was dealing with the microverse in Avengers Endgame and he had a bit of a thing, like uh, a chemistry between him and Scott Lang, I think they should put him in the third Ant-Man movie. But to what end? Like, why? I don't know. Him and, him and Scott take on the microverse? Like... Is, is there actually going to be a third end, man? Yeah, they've confirmed it. They haven't confirmed Bruce Banner's going to be in it, but that's <laughs> what I want. <laughs> I didn't even know there's enough villains for there to be three end men movies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They find them. He's going to, find, he's going to fight like a dragonfly or something in this one. Yeah, but like, imagine like Hulk taking on a giant dragonfly because he's super small. <laughs> yeah, but what if he like got so angry he made himself bigger accidentally, and he just blows up the microverse? <laughs> That's an interesting. <laughs> you, you want sensationalism? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also, and what I just mentioned, they haven't gone into the Rick um, part of it for Hulk at all. The Not Rick yet in the movies. Yeah. Who's Rick? Rick Ross. So apparently. <laughs> No, not Rick Ross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that would be pretty funny. General, um, General Rick Ross. General Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> As he's stepping out of his Rolls Royce. Um, so one of the comic lines as to why Hulk turns into the Hulk is when the gamma explosion happens, there's a kid who's out in the field. He's in the unauthorized territory and he's Rick. Banner runs out to save him. Him. And then the gamma hits him and turns him into the Hulk. Nothing happens to Rick. Oh yeah. And so Zeta, think... you know the Agents of Smash TV show? Yes. Yeah, Rick's the blue one. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. That's so it. there's versions where he does get affected. But oh, okay. There's like a thousand. Yeah. There's many, many different. Ones. I'm tempted to just call this 
uh, Malika's recap on all the versions of the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> and ranking them in order of which one was the best. <laughs> no, one of my favourites is Maestro, though. Because that's just <laughs> the dude's evil. The dude's just pure evil. I love it. Uh, I wouldn't mind a Hulk corpse. Is it Hulk core or Hulk something? Yeah, it's like a group of people that they um, injected the gamma into and they were... That's a, Agents that's, of Smash. Yeah, that's Agents of Smash. Yeah, well, I think they were originally called the Hulk Core, but then they changed the name for the t- animated series. But um, No, Hulk Core... Isn't that in the Planet Hulk line? No idea. I just know it from Wikipedia reads. <laughs> I, think that's from the, I think that's from the World War Hulk and Planet Hulk line. They're well, I know they're leaders... characters. Their leader's called General Riker. He comes after General Ross. Is he... Yeah, different characters than sort of Smash, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But yeah, that, but that whole concept in Smash, because Smash sounds better than Hulk Core. So... <laughs> yeah. Agents of Smash. Yeah. Um, speaking of Smash and Malika's background, uh, Betty yeah. Ross. Now... She's obviously a key Hulk character, but there's something about Liv Tyler that I think she's a good support. Like, she portrays well enough that she's the only one that still believes in the Bruce inside the Hulk. Mm. But she's her Betty Ross, there's something, there's something about that character that's just too much on the intimacy side or the... It's not as, like, independent and science and intelligent-like. Nothing against Liv Tyler, but it was just the way she was portrayed in the movie. Well, that's the thing. Like, besides, I don't know. Like, Mark has his thoughts on his her portrayal in Lord of the Rings, but but I have seen her in other films where I've seen her play a very strong female character. Well, of course, because she's female. But like this whole, like this very <laughs> this inner strength in herself. You know, I've seen her play parts where she was a psychologist, and she really, you know, did that part very well. Yeah. In this, I can't, it was difficult because, like you said, I didn't really get that whole science thing. And it was just this, she was just, it sounds bad. She was a Bruce Banner fangirl. Like, yeah. you know, she's I, in the, she was yeah, thirsty. she's in the, thirsty. yeah, like she's in the Bruce. diner with her boyfriend, which, again, that's its own issue there because you got the modern <laughs> family guy playing a very important character. And also, I only, like, I only just realized it was him when I was looking up the Spanish. And he just <laughs> and he just let her go with Bruce. Like it's just like all right, fine. And he no, got, he did um, rat her out rat Bruce out to the um I know, um, I know. But like still he's just like <laughs> surely he'd be uh, I guess the, He probably just didn't want him to turn into he didn't want a Hulk on him. Yeah. Banner's <laughs> no Aragon though. <laughs> <laughs> but this was in a time before they had like Valkyrie or like Captain Marvel. Well, like they had Pepper, but I'm saying like there wasn't those female characters that had their own role, their own independent role, their own like they held their own in their own storylines. Mm, yeah. It was just like we, Betty needs to be there. She needs to be. But they didn't really. But even in saying that, because the previous film, which we mentioned with Jennifer Connolly, whatever your opinions on that she played um, that role that I'm talking of, of just, she was a believable scientist. There was mm. more to it than just her being Bruce's fangirl. Like, yeah. I don't even think they were in a relationship in the film till the end of the movie. Like, they were re- she was more interested, I think, in the whole scenario and trying to figure it out and trying to help Bruce, but also try and figure out what was going on. Yeah. I, well, think, <laughs> I think she... What they did, what she did well was that support as in, because Bruce was obviously very uh, alone, isolated and not fitting in anywhere and obviously he's on the run. But yeah. with uh, Betty, she's the only one who still, yeah, like I said, she still sees Bruce regardless of the Hulk. And uh, yeah, she's trying to help him, but her support and help, there was nothing sciencey about uh, any of the help she was giving. And, no, it's um, still emotional. Yeah, it was all just emotions, which... And it caused friction between him and Ross. Because she'll be, she'll be like, Daddy, why are you doing this? And he's like, yeah. I have to, he's a monster. Like, it wasn't then... exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then at the end, when um, Abomination is just tearing up the city, she grabs Bruce and says, uh, she tells him not to go down there or, and help as the Hulk. But yeah, I, yeah. 
I don't know if that's because it's like because they just uh, made that uh, temporary cure. Wasn't it because um, she was scared that he was going to die? Like he might not turn in the Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Hits the ground, or yeah, yeah that, that's what that sounds like. She's more yeah. worried about the Hulk than the. I still don't understand there. why he had to like. They, why they couldn't just let him off on a building or something? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a cool scene, but I don't well, understand. There was a cool, there was a throwback to it though, like in Ragnarok, where he jumps out of the, he jumps oh, out yeah. of the thing onto the yeah, bridge and he doesn't. That turn. was great. <laughs> that was great. Uh, just, but just on a lift, Tyler. Like, if they ever do explore the Red Hulks any further, they don't quite see her as Red She Hulk. So, or as yeah, I don't know if they'd bring her back for a Betty Ross. Yeah, yeah, they'd have to bring someone else. Actually, on that, who do you think would be a good Betty Ross? If there was another Betty Ross, it's a good question. Um, Gal Gadot, no, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you need someone who can seem intelligent. Well, I still think, like I said, if I think Liv Tyler is still. No, she's too young. <laughs> yeah. She's got the right features. It's going to be someone around Ruffalo's age. And yeah, you, you reckon you still see Liv Tyler doing it, pulling it off? I can see her pulling it off, but you, I think but, you just need the right direction. But not, if they, not if they bring the Red Hulks into it. She's not... Oh, no, I can't see her doing that, Hulk. no. I think we've got to but, consider, too, uh, this movie was pre-Disney. And also, I think Nor- Norton's... Even though he didn't write the script or anything... The way he would have... Like, he did write the script. Okay, well, there you go. Then his, <laughs> his influence in the movie will have affected yeah. potentially how she was portrayed as well. Because he was I all, read... me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read somewhere, um, he went under the pseudonym of like Ed Harrison or something what? to write the script. So, yeah. But... Okay, yeah. It's not, I don't think it's a known fact, but... He's, he's a bit strange. Yeah. Well, the reason he left, wasn't it? Because he wanted to change it even more so. Yeah, he wanted to have the most creative control. And even though the vision he had sounded like something I could be into, yeah, I don't think I could... It set, fit it, the MCU. No, in hindsight, we would have missed out on this great opportunity. But I think for me, it's difficult because, like, again, I understand in real life, not every relationship is significant. Like... People break up, things happen, that's fine. But it's difficult in a movie where you have him having this big romance of Black Widow. And in your mind, for me anyway, I'm just like, well, what about Betty Ross? Like, that yeah. was never explained. That was never dealt with. Like, at least with Thor, it was like, oh, yeah, I dumped Jane. Like, <laughs> or she dumped me. Like, there was at least some explanation. She was a... And I, I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, that's a thing for me, but I think most fans don't, probably don't care about that, I assume, but yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, hey, most of us just want to say Hulk smash. Hulk smash. <laughs> uh, pretty much. I think one of the things that was pretty cool in this movie, I'm not sure how it's portrayed in the comics, but a lot of the, like in Avengers, they say that the way Colton describes Hulk to Cap is that essentially, they were trying to do something similar to the super soldier serum bio enhancement, but focus more on gamma radiation. And I thought it was a pretty cool connection there as to the origins of the Hulk. It was just Ross's whole, his whole uh, thing, just bio enhancement. Yeah. It was like a fiction with the Hulk. Yeah. Or like trying to create, trying to recreate. Captain America, but I don't know. I can't remember how that plays out in the comics, though. It's um, nuclear. I think it's different. Yeah, it's because it was made during the time of atomic warfare. So it was like they tried to make an atom bomb out of gamma radiation or something. And then it, an accident happened with that. But then later on, I think even, even the movies influenced it. Well, I mean, sorry, the yeah. 70s TV show influenced it. But yeah. they went more like he's a, like a medical physicist. And he created something to maybe cure cancer or something. And then the machine that did that, like, yeah, but it always comes back to gamma radiation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But there were a lot of references in this movie to the super soldier serum. Like when Ross, uh, the serum itself that he injects into Blonsky was like blue, a similar shade of blue. And, yeah. um, 
again, it was that whole thing of like, because throughout the movie, you see Blonsky start to like turn, like mutate into something ugly before abomination. Yeah. And it was like drawing out what's inside. So there was a lot about the serum, obviously, that uh, wasn't perfected as, they, as uh, Erskine had it. You mean, in saying that, because let's remember the serum turned Red Skull into Red Skull. Yeah. And it turned Captain America into Captain America and it turned Blonsky into what he was. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's a bit far-fetched, but it just, the serum makes you into what's inside. Yeah, yeah. Like if you str- it's like the... Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm saying it was like, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, good connection. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see where you come from, yeah. So the leader, we weren't a big fan of that. I... Yeah, that, that was a strange little, from memory watching it like 10 years ago, whatever it was. I think that's actor, a strange um, little addition. I can't remember his name, but uh, Stur- like the character's name is Stern. I thought he was good in, uh, honestly, you couldn't tell he was a villain or he was going to become a villain, but mm. his obsession with gamma radiation was played off well enough to hint towards there's something wrong with this guy. And he even says himself in the movie, I'm more... Um, are more curious than cautious when Hulk warns him about, oh, when Banner warns him about the repercussions of what could happen with all this experimenting and crap. Oh, and he has a store of, like, Hulk's blood, uh, Banner's blood, like, everywhere. And then, obviously, he goes on to create Blonsky's abomination. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon the head head thing seems like it was more just one of those... Hey, here you go for the comic fans. Like, if you were just watching the Hulk, you'd really have no idea why the dude's head was too big. Or what yeah. that meant. I reckon they would have wanted, would have wanted to do something with that, but, but yeah. I think yeah. now it we can just like assume... They wanted. <laughs> you can just assume he's just got a big head. <laughs> he just has to live with well, that now. Well, they've just done it, and they're like, well... Because it seems like they've done that in a few other Marvel movies where they've left an Easter egg like that and just gone, just in case we want to use it later. Yeah. And we'll they said, I'm sure. Just put it in there. Like, like it's easy. Yeah. Like with Mysterio and with um, Bath, the, the um, interactive interface that Tony used in Civil War. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like they, they, just yeah. Leave, they just leave little things there and go... Yeah, just in case we want to make a movie about this later or introduce it. We've already had it somewhere in one of the movies. But I feel like it's been 10 years and because this is more one of the forgettable ones, unfortunately, if the leader popped up, it's like, ah, remember me? Everyone would be like, which, what? <laughs> 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 but would, yeah, he come back with, would he come back with that German accent, though? Did he have a German accent? No, it's what oh, you, no, it's hey, you just <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be more memorable if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cause himself that's a green skull. But honestly, if I they I, I, <laughs> but if they got someone like Christoph Waltz or someone to play him, I think he'll be a lot more like this. The guy who played him, I've seen him in other things, but he's not. I, for me, he's never really been memorable. Like he was in the Fantastic Four remake as yeah. the bad guy in that. Um, yeah. He got it. Actually, I think he got his head blown up in that. So maybe there's a connection. (laughs) It was just a nod. (laughs) It was an Easter egg. (laughs) That's what happened to him. But yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like you need someone. I I don't know. Maybe the guy's a lot more famous in mainstream builds, but I think you need someone a lot more memorable to play these sort of roles. But then Tom Hiddleston wasn't known when he played Loki. So I don't know. Yeah. Or Tom Tom Holland, mm. yeah. But then Jake Gyllenhaal is Mysterio. But anyway. uh, well, you did say who who does thought they would have gonna choose? They're gonna choose Robert Downey for Iron Man, especially coming off his uh, his dark history. Yeah, true. There was a lot of Easter eggs to the to the old old Hulk in this movie. Um, like you had Bill Bixby, like. There's a bit where Banner's watching, I don't know, Brazilian TV, and there's a scene from a movie or something, and Bixby is in it, and then yeah, yeah, Lou Ferrigno fact, is yeah. one of the um, bodyguards at the school. Oh yeah, and then there's a soundtrack from from the 
that TV show as well where Banner's just walking up and it's really dramatic. I think it's cool. Like, I've started watching the 1970s show, but I think it's cool there was a Hulk show. Like, actually, that reminds me, um, just after this film came out, you guys know Guillermo del Toro? I think I've butchered his name. Yeah, yeah, the guy that wrote The Strain. Yeah. Did he write The Strain? Yeah, del Toro. He wrote that water creature movie thing. Yeah, like Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, all, all yeah. those ones. Yeah, yeah, he wrote The Strain. Okay. He was going to um, do a Hulk TV series, which was going to be very like horror and very like, oh really, very dark and edgy. But when they went with Mark Ruffalo's, they said, "No, we don't <laughs> want to do yours anymore." So <laughs> that was sounds like it would be like a mix of, like you were saying before, Jekyll and Hyde, Frankenstein, Dracula, yeah. like all rolled into one. Yeah, which I'll be, I would have been interested to see. Like again, yeah, it wouldn't be that bad. I don't know. Like it's difficult. Like I. But then why couldn't you have had both? Like, I wouldn't mind, like, Mark Ruffalo's one on the screen and... Just a different have... universe or just not even related. Yeah. Mm. Like its own thing. Well, or it's like alone. a what, what If Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are they going to do Hulk and the What Ifs? I don't, I don't know if there are any Hulk What If runs. Oh, okay. There there's go. an awesome... Um, I, there's sorry. A, there's awesome Punisher one. They did fun. say that... <laughs> Samson, I don't know why, would potentially be. There was a rumor that he'd potentially be in Winter Soldier. And, uh, Samson, uh, Modern Family Guy. Yeah. We didn't but, talk about him, eh? We should talk Wait, about him. Yeah, that's Samson. Samson's like completely different in the comics. <laughs> yeah, I know. Doc, so, yeah. Dr. Samson's Backtrack. like tank. Doc Samson. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's like buff in the comics. But I think. What he like, I don't. He's accurate. I don't know how accurate he was, but the because he's a good guy, and I think if anything that was right about him was the his morals. Like even though he called, he kind of snitched on uh, Banner and Betty. Um, he he saw through Ross in that uh, Ross was essentially almost killed his own daughter, and that Hulk was protecting him. And he saw the good good side to Hulk and he does say he's more scientist than soldier or whatever but Robin are you a big modern family fan <laughs> nah not really I oh no just you really haven't seen really defending episode. I'm just trying to <laughs> no, say because just... <laughs> like people destroy this movie and I just I don't know for some reason after watching it today I was like is it really that bad <laughs> no yeah, well yeah. I saw this scene in the trailer, and they never put in the movie where they have yeah, Doc Samson sit, got, sit down. Really yeah, Samson, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he, he sits was, down with, sorry, yeah, with Bruce, and he's saying to him, he's like, "Look, you can tell me, you know, I've heard it all, you know, because he's a psychiatrist." And Bruce was like, "Oh, you haven't heard anything like this." So, I feel like he was supposed to have a more prominent role, maybe something similar to what um, Michelle Williams' boyfriend in Venom was to like Tom Hardy. Oh yeah, <laughs> but. Again, like Mark said, it's not a very comic book accurate depiction. And no, even no. if he did get beefed up, like, I can't imagine that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, <don't Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it'd take a lot of CGI, if anything. <laughs> not that they can't pull it off. I mean, they pulled off well, like, Steve's, Steve's skinny body and then Thanos' Josh Brolin, like, like it was enough. Yeah, like. true. So, yeah, maybe he could get beefed. I don't know. <laughs> Mark, who would be like an actor equivalent to the Doc Samson in the comics? Lou Ferrigno. Oh, um, just looking at oh, the different versions of him, you'd need someone that's almost Chris Hemsworth. That's like. what I'm thinking. What, Liam Hemsworth? No, nah, too small. <laughs> and too much like Thor. Like. <laughs> yeah, like you need, you need someone with Hemsworth's height and build. And Steve, like long... Stephen Amell? I can nah. see that. Well, li you literally only need a face and the body that can just do the rest. John Nick Cena? Long... Oh, his acting is a bit too... Yeah, yeah. his acting is lacking. Yeah. <laughs> that you wouldn't be able to see in the whole movie anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, why is he speaking? Yeah, like, but I, I just see a, a spoof of it with Cena just wearing a green wig. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love it for John Cena yeah, just to just jump in. Parody. 
<laughs> and just be like, John Cena. Like, yeah. But they could. Yeah, a wrestler would work. I mean, Batista pulled off Drax. Yeah. That's because Drax was pretty emotionless. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's kind of like, that's another thing. Like, we saw in the 80s and the set, well, I think the 70s with like Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Like, it would be good to have like, Someone big. big dudes like that mm. coming. To you know who could? You know who? Like if you played it back then, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, give him long that. hair, and he'd play Doc Samson. Yeah, he would be a good Thor back in the day. <laughs> yeah, he would have. He's he's tank enough. Do you know um Tyler Maine? <laughs> Tyler Maine. Yeah, he played Sabretooth in X Men, but ah oh, yeah, he, he was going to be Thor okay. originally. Oh, really? Back in the nineties, yeah. Back then, he probably could have played Doc Samson. Who? Dolph Lundgren. No, Tyler Mack. I'm just looking yeah. at photos of him. Yeah. He was a... He's big enough. He was a blank saber-tooth, though. Like, there was nothing to him. Yeah, true. He was just... <sighs> Kevin, Kevin Nash back Let me hear you scream. Well. <laughs> Kevin Nash. <yeah. laughs> I don't know. I think of Kevin Nash, I think of the Adam Sandler movies. Because I only remember him along this yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stoke Cold Fever, Austin. Go- oh, how about Goldberg? <laughs> <laughs> he just starts spearing the Hulk. <laughs> but it's even like with Terry Crews. Like, he's a big dude. But because he's so known for, like, comedies, I can't imagine him in a serious role. So I couldn't yeah. even imagine him in the MCU. Yeah, like, even Expendables. He's the com- He's just the comedy in there. Yeah, like he's in Deadpool too, but like he dies in like a couple of. Mi- he's the comic relief again. Like, mm. <laughs> was that so, post credit scene there when they released it in the movies? I didn't watch it in the movies, but I assume it was. Because I think it was Iron Man had its one, and that was before. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know the post credit scene existed until a few years ago. Well. Another way they justified it was like Tony and Ross have continued that relationship. Like Civil War works because of Ross. Well, it's not built on it, but like part of, part of the threads of it is the fact that you got Ross and Tony having that same bickering type, you know, relationship. Yeah. So yeah. that was paid off later. So it's hard because it's like, 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 I'm not sure if Robin said it. This is the cousin to the other movies in a way. It's related, but then it's not heavily yeah. influence, influential, but then it's, it does have its influences. It's like the second cousin three times removed. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I mean, <laughs> uh, as, a, as a cousin. All right, how about this? Hulk versus Wolverine. Because apparently that's a big thing in the comics. Yeah, it's in the it cartoon. It's, it's, I've seen it in a cartoon. Wolverine gets yeah. wrecked. Oh, yeah, but apparently Hulk eats him and then Wolverine just claws his way out. <laughs> That's yeah, in the yeah. old man Logan. Yeah. Yeah. Just cut off his head. See if that works. That man, actually, that old man, that old man Logan storyline with the Hulk is pretty messed up. Yeah, it was like he married She Hulk and yeah, they, and they had like Hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like Hillbilly Hulk. And yeah. he go, they go and kill the Wolverine family or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the only thing Logan really took from that was the fact that Logan was old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> also that's why it's called Old Men Logan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, we might as well go on our end note. Final, uh, final thoughts on the Hulk, where it ranks, and where you rank Hulk. Yeah. Hulk's always number one for me. Out of all Marvel superheroes. So what? Wait, did you say one out of ten, Mark? No, I was just saying Hulk is always my number one in the oh, Marvel okay. universe. Okay. Any Marvel universe. So are we ranking the movie, or was this the final thoughts? No, that, that's just, that's that's the character Hulk. Oh yeah. The movie itself, though. Eh. I can't. I haven't watched it in so long. I can't really put it against the new movies. There you go. I enjoy it for what it is. Um, until now, I don't think I'm going to fully get the Hulk 
movie that I'm looking for, but until then I will enjoy the aspects of these films that work for me. And I'm happy for what it was. And I'm happy that the legacy it left behind by leading into the comic book accurate hogs, which was a different take, but brought a lot of enjoyment. Yeah. Well, I used to rank this movie. I still kind of rank it mid to low tier. This yeah. the Incredible Hulk, Inc- but just like in comparison to the MCU's and all that. Yeah. Um, as for the Hulk himself, if anything, uh, um, after this, like, I'd say there's there's more to the Hulk than just some dude with the brute strength, and <laughs> you know the one they, the one they use for muscle, and you know I just, I could appreciate the Hulk a bit more as, you know, there's more dimensions to this big green. Okay. Yeah, there is one thing. This is not my last point. I think this is the only time in the MCU that one of the main heroes kills Stan Lee. Is it? Does he kill him? I can't remember. I don't know. His blood gets on the um, fizzy yeah, drink, yeah. and in the movie, Stan Lee yeah. drinks it, and he gets gamma poisoning. But they don't say what happened to him. But he does drink, drop the bottle. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he just becomes a gamma powered Stan. <laughs> nah, if it, if it was just by inducing blood, a lot of people would be the Hulk right now. <laughs> I don't know because it is gamma radiation. Uh, but then, like, why is Hulk alive? But I know, but like, it's all oh, right as to whether or not he died. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think he, maybe that's why we keep seeing him in all the movies. It just gives him like long life. <laughs> He's just, he's immortal now. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, final rating, I don't know, five, six yeah. out of ten? Six. Yeah, I'll give it a six. All right. Well, folks, uh, that's all we have for The Incredible Hulk. Thanks again, boys, for joining in. Take it easy. Yeah. Do you think Grant's at uh, the bottle shop? <laughs> Grant, I hope you got us all drinks or something, mate, because you took a while. We'll, yeah, we'll but there might him. be gamma blood in those drinks. So we'll, we'll meet him on COD Warzone later. And won't help him out. All right. <laughs>